Hello, and uh, I hope everybody enjoyed my last video. Um, I had a really fun time making it, I think just because I, I, I just, over the last year, just so many things have happened. I've done so much healing. I've had so much growth, and it's just really jump-started me into Becoming, I think, even more confident in everything that I talk about, like, I think even a year ago, I probably, on social media, wouldn't be talking about how I channel Pleiadians and how that stuff is just so normal to me, but, uh, I don't know if anyone saw today, but today I made a post about being sensitive. And when someone tells you you're too sensitive, what that could mean. So, we are in a time where the rainbow children, the crystal children, the indigo children, they're all being born and are coming into this lifetime with an increased amount of sensitivity, emotional sensitivity, emotional awareness, and great empathy. They have empathy for animals, they have empathy for each other. They set themselves up in this lifetime to go through trial after trial, battle after battle, to have their sensitivity tested, to feel so knocked down and thrown around by the world and everything it has done to them that they were close and then they go through a series of lessons to make themselves awaken and have themselves rise. They are continuously put in situations where they don't feel good enough, where they feel sad, where they feel oppressed, where they feel abused because they need to create certain issues that force themselves to grow and help them awaken to remember who they actually are. We are in a world right now where everyone is so desensitized. Even looking in dairy, dairy, they put extra opiate-like effects in it so people never deal with their emotional issues. They're continuously eating dairy and getting high daily to not deal with their emotional issues. You go to a doctor, you go to a psychologist, you tell them you have a certain issue. You're being given some type of medication to make you avoid it. We are in a time where avoidance of issues is heightened. We are in a time where it's glamorizing depression and glamorizing sadness, and that is not a world I want to live in. As an empath, as somebody that has had all these battles, all these trials, all these tribulations, in order to awaken, to rise, to heal myself, I have had an abusive childhood. I came from a toxic home. I was heavily bullied um, in toxic, abusive relationship after the next. I had a sociopathic ex-fiance that abused the shit out of me. I had a sociopathic best friend that I taught Reiki to. I have been through you know, my fair share, and I never say that in a way of, oh, poor me, I've been through so much. Not to invalidate anyone's pain that they may still be in that place because I was once there, but the reason I ever bring up the hard things I've been through and I talk about my stories and I talk about myself is never to make it about me. It is to show some type of platform. It is to show some type of example that I've been exactly where you are. I know how you feel and I have great empathy for where you are and that is why I continue to share my stories. So this time period that we're in, it's, you know, everybody, you know, they have their, their certain crutches that they use. They avoid even healers. Healers are so guilty. They take care of everybody else and they don't think of themselves. They don't heal themselves. But in order to heal, we have to go back to the beginning. So we have to go to the beginning to get to the start. So the one thing that stays tried and true for the empath and the sensitive is you stay sensitive. As much as the world has broken you or tried to, you stay sensitive and you still have empathy for people. You could still seek compassion no matter how many times you have been stamped in the back, no matter how much abuse you faced, you still rise to the occasion of having compassion for even the very people that have burned you and hurt you because that is who we are. We are here in this time period to bring love and compassion back to the earth. If somebody tells you you're too sensitive, it's not because you are too sensitive. Being sensitive is a gift in this world. To go through what you've been through and still have a good heart and still be sensitive and still be willing to talk about your emotions, that is a gift. It's what happens when we're in these relationships or around these people that they tell us we're too sensitive. So we fear speaking up for ourselves. We go to a reclusive place where we never speak our opinion again or how we feel. We allow people to dictate how we feel and we let it all sit inside of us because we are too afraid to be unaccepted, to be unloved, to be unliked. If we happen to even give an ounce of how we are feeling. I can't tell you how many times in relationships I've been told I'm too dramatic or I'm too sensitive. And it was always when I was calling somebody out on their shit. When I was calling somebody out on their shit, 
lovingly because me then I, I was not assertive but I knew when something was wrong and I'd been through enough in my childhood to know when something was off. In that time period would have done anything about it. I never would have been the person to leave someone or break up them. I would still say how you're talking to me is wrong or how you're treating me is not fair to me. And they would be like, oh, you're too sensitive, you're too dramatic. And it's like, no, I'm telling you that when you pushed me away from your car and sped off and left me laying in the middle of a street, that was fucked up. That doesn't make me too sensitive. You just don't want to meet the fact that you can be imperfect. People do not want to see in themselves where they could possibly be wrong, where they could possibly not be correct. People's egos are so inflated in this day and age it is like walking around on glass and eggshells around everybody. The second you try and call someone out or even lovingly tell somebody that they're having a destructive pattern, and trust me, I understand that as a healer, the second you tell someone how you feel, they will react in an instance to make it personal onto you or to not have to deal with it. So of course these people that aren't willing to meet their emotional issues, aren't willing to go back to their childhood and understand why they are the way that they are, people that don't want to understand their destructive and toxic patterns, of course these people are going to say you are too sensitive because you are calling them out on something that they don't wish to be called out on. And that is not your problem to take in. It is not your problem to sit in a relationship or sit in a friendship or sit with people that just don't vibrate where you do, that don't have the heart that you do, people that find joy in talking about each other, people that find joy in the blame game because that's not how empaths and sensitives are. We are sensitive for a reason, we have empathy for a reason because we see ourselves and feel ourselves in other people's situations and issues and there is nothing wrong with that. Don't you ever for a second think that being sensitive makes you bad. The reason we have such deep sensitivity is because they say that the empath, um, it, you know, we're earth angels. So we have the vibrational field and the loving energy of what they call agape love, which is the love that they have in heaven, which is the highest vibrational realm, whatever your resonance is. There is no right or wrong. And they say that we are searching on the earth for our multiple soulmates, so we have our lessons, so we feel such deep love with them in order to fall even harder so that we awaken even quicker. Empaths in this time period, we are receiving lessons that are far deeper than other people's. Ever notice the empath is always the one that's in the worst relationship you've ever heard of? The empath is always the one that's been abused. The empath and the sensitive are always the ones that have been with drug addicts, been with liars, been cheated on, been hit been mentally abused, been verbally abused, because we need to fall so hard to the point of destruction, to the point of we don't even know who we are anymore, but we know that we still have good in our heart. We still have compassion for people. We still have love and fire in our eyes to fight for ourselves at some capacity. It's because we're not meant to fall. And we're not meant to listen to these people that say, oh, you're too sensitive or oh, you're too dramatic. Because the same people in my life that have ever said that to me years later, when I grew into who I was supposed to be, are the same people asking me for help. The same people saying, I have this reoccurring anxiety that I don't know how to deal with. I don't know how to get rid of this anxiety. Why do I always feel like something bad's gonna happen? And it's like, well, you know, when you were calling people sensitive or you were trying to be a cool kid, I was busy meeting my needs. I was busy healing my needs. And I could tell you right now, anxiety is because you didn't deal with your emotional needs. You didn't deal with your emotional issues. And you stayed stuck in a psychosis of trying to be a cool kid, whether it be high school, out of high school, college, early, late 20s. You stayed stuck in a psychosis of when you either felt cool or wanted to be cool. And you don't know how to grow out of it. And now we're sitting in a generation of everybody that's not acting like themselves. They act like other people. They do things to try and impress other people. They do things that are out of their character. They do things to try to fit in. I mean, look at even being a sensitive empath. Like I say all the time that being a sensitive empath and being told I was too sensitive or too, too dramatic or whatever they would say, it landed me in so many awful situations. It landed me with the sociopaths. It landed me with you know, becoming a people pleaser for everybody and just doing anything that wouldn't disrupt anyone's life and wouldn't make them look at me as a target because I was picked on. 
I became somebody that I would just do anything I could for someone to just like me. I needed them to like me so bad. Why did I need that validation? Because I had not healed the child that never had it growing up. I had not healed the child that was so sensitive and couldn't understand why the world was so mean to her. I had to heal the child that in third grade her ears stuck out and a girl was so mean to her and picked on her so deeply. She went home and contemplated suicide in third grade because she was that picked on because she was that sensitive. Yes, third grade, probably got my first fist fight. Um, I had done karate my whole life, so yeah, I punched her in the face. But, you know, it's, you know, I was a kid. I had to stick up for myself, but when I was little, for some reason I knew how to stand up for myself. As sensitive as I was, as much as I hid, I knew how to stand up for myself. And then I grew up in a world where it got even worse and I was picked on and told I was, I was too sensitive and I was too dramatic, even by principals and teachers. The people that were supposed to protect me in middle school and high school. In middle school, I had an incident where my teeth were bad and my ears stuck out. And the kids that were on certain sports teams were picking on me so bad. This is boys. I was being hit by boys. I was being threatened by boys older than me. And my principal told me I was making it all up. Because if they got in trouble, they wouldn't be able to compete. Great enough. He was their coach. So that's pretty funny when you look at it that a coach wanted their team to win so bad and couldn't have people being taken out and they were doing such destructive things to a little girl that he told me I was making it up and they got me sent away and put away somewhere for apparently being a liar and being crazy. I had to get blood work done, I had to get a psych evaluation all because I stood up for myself and told on people. Now imagine what that does to a kid. It makes them afraid. It makes them afraid to ever tell someone that something bad is happening again. It makes them hold it in. It makes them not fight for themselves because they feel like if they fight for themselves, they're gonna be punished. That is the behavior and those are the actions that people have put on us our entire life of being sensitive and not being able to, oh, bullies will be bullies and kids will be kids. Fuck that. I don't ever wanna fucking hear that because that is the very reason why I grew up with depression. I grew up with anxiety. I was afraid to stand up for myself. I was afraid to tell anyone how I felt. And then that landed me. Honestly, my codependency and my my fears of not making somebody happy, hold no, landed me in a rape incident because I was afraid to stand up for myself. Now think of what that does to the little girl who is that young, who is so afraid to say no or stand up for themselves. I had to live with that mental torment every day until I went back and healed it. That is the destruction that being a people pleaser of listening when they say you're too sensitive or you're too dramatic and wanting to people please people. Those are the destructive patterns we get into. We are so afraid to tell people how we feel and maybe disrupt the boat because we have such empathy for their side. I will always say I have such a hard time telling people how I feel because I see why they're doing what they're doing. But I read one of the most amazing quotes the other day and it said just because you can understand what somebody's been through and why they are the way that they are does not validate their abuse they've done onto you. And it doesn't. None of that fixes it. None of that helps it. It's, it's basically you are finding an excuse because as empaths, that's what we do. We find excuses for people as to why we should still be trying to save them because we have empathy for them, because we are sensitive. Now we need to take that sensitivity and we need to take that great empathy and we need to start giving it to ourselves. We need to allow ourselves into these situations, but we can't fall for too long. We have to rise ourselves back up. We have to bring ourselves back to a place where we fight for us. And we know that we are not too sensitive. There is nothing wrong with us. It is everything that's right with us that is gonna bring the love and compassion back into this earth on this time of need. In 2017, we are back to year one. We are at the end of a nine year cycle and this is all brand new things, brand new manifestations. You're gonna see your life start to happen exactly how it's supposed to. Letting go of financial fears, letting go of financial worry. Stop worrying about people receiving karma. Stop worrying about other people. This is the year you need to focus on you. You need to turn around and look at every incident in your life where someone degraded you, made you feel bad for your sensitivity, made you feel bad for feeling too much or seeing too much, because I know with me, I would always know if something was wrong. I, I'm the empath that I could feel someone's stomach do something and look at them and be like, is, is something wrong and they would think I was crazy because they're like how and uh, you know when you get the text message and there's like one abbreviation or one thing off with it and you know that there's something wrong 
and then you say, is everything okay? And they're like, oh, you know, no, you're being crazy. No, you're not being crazy. You're training yourself. Basically, all of our traumas as empaths and sensitives and light workers growing up of being accused of these things was the world actually training us. Because what were we always proven? Right, when we knew that there was something off with somebody. We always knew, we didn't follow our gut. What is that teaching us? All of our traumas and being told we're too sensitive and verbal abuse and abuse on the empath growing up with people that do not have the same empathy has never been to hurt us. It's been to train us, it's been to teach us how to talk to humanity, how to help humanity, how to heal ourselves, how to rise ourselves, and how to become exactly who we are supposed to be in this lifetime. And that is a blessing. Thank you for allowing me to be a part of your journeys, allowing me to be a part of, uh, you know, just my dreams are coming true, is what I'm trying to say. Um, I fought very, very hard for myself. This has not been something that happens overnight. I walk the talk and I talk the walk. I've done the work, I do the work daily. I'm consistently working on my shadow work. I'm consistently facing myself. I do not believe I'm perfect. I do not believe I'm better than anyone else. And the second the world starts to understand that in themselves and realize that, when you realize something you're doing may not be perfect, you have to give yourself that same empathy of no, I can't be wrong, I can't be wrong. No one said you were wrong. Just maybe look at your childhood. Look at something that's happened to you. And the reason you project yourself the way that you do. I know with my boyfriend now, Jake is incredibly, incredibly patient with me. I mean, we have patience with each other. No one's perfect. But, you know, there have been times that I've snapped at him over, you know, him saying something like, oh, are you gonna finish your food? And I've snapped at him because my sociopathic ex used to belittle me in front of waitresses, in front of people, and tell me that I really need to start eating better because I'm starting to look malnutrition, and I'm starting to look like I don't eat healthy, and I'm starting to look sick, and just, you know, typical abuse. Um, you know, look at yourself and things. Like, where can you correlate it? Like, where can you correlate where, you know, something happened in your life, and it made you have to go into fight or flight mode? Because when we have something trigger us from our past, we go into fight or flight mode, and that's our perception and our projection. So say somebody says something to you that's happened to you in the past, but you forget that that happened. You're going into fight or flight mode. You're doing whatever you can to protect yourself from something that first scarred you ever happening again. And more people need to understand that. It is not that you are not imperfect. It is not that you are wrong. It's not that there's something wrong with you. It's because you need to heal. You are not too sensitive. Keep that sensitivity and run to the top of mountains with it. Let your empathy and sensitivity shine a light on this world that is so needed right now, all while healing yourself so nothing's personal anymore and you understand that everything is a projection and you're doing exactly what you're supposed to be doing. Hope everybody enjoys this. Um, I always love my little rants because I just go, bah, bah, bah. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Uh, I don't know if anyone's noticed, I've been uh, having a lot of uh, more energy and inspiration. And you know, I have a video coming for everybody, but it has a lot to do with parasite cleansing. And it's gonna be a very long, drawn out video. But uh, yeah, it's gonna be a good one. So stay tuned. But um, oh, I'm also filming another one tomorrow with Rob, who um, actually films the good ones edited. Um, so, you know, thank you for watching and, uh, hope you enjoy what I have to say. Everyone have a great one.